The Book of Proverbs, Wisdom Regarding Family, Part 2. C. To ensure adequate material provisions. 1. Be righteous, Proverbs 27. A. Today that means putting the kingdom of God first in your life, Matthew 6, 33. B. Then God will watch out for you and providentially see that your needs are adequately met. C. Children of righteous parents are truly blessed. B. But parents who fail to put God first go through life without God's provincial help and their children may suffer as a result. 2. Concentrate on acquiring wisdom and knowledge, not wealth. Proverbs 24, 3 and 4. A. This would involve a careful study and application of God's Word, especially a book like Proverbs. B. But it also involves living a dedicated life as a disciple, learner of Jesus Christ, in whom are hidden the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Colossians 2, 2 and 3. From the Proverbs, then, we learn that the best and wisest thing parents can do for their family is to provide themselves as obedient servants of God and to instill such faith in their children. If this is done, God will see that their material needs are met. But what about the matter of raising children? Raising children. A. The purpose, use of corporal punishment. 1. Used properly, it is a demonstration of true love. Proverbs 13.24 2. Proper discipline has proper objectives. A. To remove foolishness from the child. Proverbs 22.15 B. To save the soul of the child. Proverbs 23.13 and 14 C. To impart wisdom and avoid shame. Proverbs 29.15 3. Proper discipline has its rewards. Proverbs 29.17 A. Such as rest and delight. B. A child who will love you and live in such a way as to bring you delight. 4. Of course, there must be proper application of corporal punishment. Proverbs 19.18 a. To be applied before the situation gets out of hand, while there is hope. B. To be applied under controlled circumstances. Do not set your heart on his destruction. 1. Do not put it off until you strike in anger. 2. There is a difference between proper spanking and child abuse. C. Corporal punishment should never be a vent for letting off steam. 1. Rather, a controlled use of one method to discourage bad behavior. 2. To be accompanied with love. Ephesians 6.4 As implied by the word nurture. B. More wisdom from a familiar verse. Proverbs 22.6 1. As commonly translated, train up a child in the way he should go. A. This allows for the common interpretation in which a child's outcome is virtually dependent upon his training, especially in spiritual matters. 1. If the child is brought up right by godly parents, the child must turn out all right. 2. So if a child is not a faithful Christian, it must always be a failing of the parents. B. But this view suggests environmental predestination or behavioral detrimism. 2. Literally, the verse can be translated, train up a child according to his way. A. That is, train up a child according to his or her inclinations. B. For example, don't try to force a child who is mechanically inclined to be a doctor or a lawyer. C. Rather bring up a child according to his or her aptitude and they will likely continue what they start out in life doing. D. Therefore, this verse, like so many in Proverbs, is simply giving us practical advice in raising our children without necessarily 
any spiritual implications. Conclusion 1. My purpose has not been to provide an exhaustive treatment of this subject covered in Proverbs. 2. Rather to illustrate its value to Christians in all areas of our lives. A. That it does speak to such matters as providing for family and raising children. B. So that we will study and meditate on it more often. Since so much of our happiness or lack of it is affected by our family life, we should want to take advantage of the wisdom offered in this area by the book of Proverbs. This ends our study on the wisdom regarding family, part 1 and 2.